Uh, I'm Grayson McClure. I'm 23. I'm sick <laughs> with something. We aren't quite sure what. Um, I have been like this for, I guess, getting close to half my life now. been uh, over 11 years and I'm since the night I got sick I've had burning in my head that never never stops nothing has ever ever helped it no matter what we've tried. I am Kay McClure, and I'm from Memphis, Tennessee. Um, been in Reno now for, it'll be five years, if we stay here till July, it'll be five full years for medical treatment for my son Grayson, um, who has been sick with an undiagnosed condition for 11 years. Um, can he became ill um, January 13th, 2005. Mom, um, she's taken care of me since, well, I mean forever. Are you so sorry? Yes. Good. You good? Okay. I'm his mom. I'm his 24-7 caretaker. Uh, I'm his researcher. I'm his advocate. I never stop. Um, I never stop doing this researching, whether it's a doctor, a clinic, a disease, a medicine. Right now, I have a lot of tremors, seizure-like movement. <laughs> Just, they're with me constantly. All I do is fight. I, I try to control, but can't. Just trying to walk is exhausting and I'm trying to keep myself up because usually I'll have my legs pop, my knees, my knees will pop and give out so I'll start collapsing which I'm then forced to hold myself up with my arms, which then puts pressure into them, and that um, starts their tremors. I feel grinding my shoulder will pop inside out where it's jutting out of my armpit. Grayson? Oh! Ah! Uh. Uh. 
This is why we don't move around too much. Oh. We're still here every night. <laughs> amazing what goes on in someone's condo that you never know what's going on. But we manage. He lives in the cave. We call it the cave. His room. There are times we've been in there 17 hours except for me to come out and go to the kitchen to get, a medic get his oral medication or something to drink or eat. Um, there's no life, but he wouldn't say that. Uh, I've looked up at the dark ceiling many, many times, looking for an answer, looking for hope, a signal, an angel, something, something. Show me that there is somebody listening. But, you know, I, I've told people, pray for him because I don't think my prayers go through the ceiling anymore. And you try not to be negative because we're not negative people, but he has suffered more than any human being should have ever suffered, and he never complains. Every day is pretty much identical. I, I have my two nephews, but but they send us pictures of them all the time and occasionally we'll, we'll um, FaceTime with them and actually get to see them. And that's, that's the greatest, greatest thing in the world. They're, they're incredible. I, I, I love them so much. I mean, I, I, I can't put into words how much they mean. So my hope is, his hope is that his case helps others, and that's fine. I hope it does too. I'm glad, believe me, I, I would love for him to be able to help, but I'm selfish and I want my son well. He suffered long enough. So that's my hope that somebody will accept his case and help us. And we've had help. We're just at a point where we still don't have an answer. I just want an answer. If it helps, great. But stabilize him. Do something to help this problem where he can have some type of quality of life. May not can fix him, but just help. Some people might look at this and look at me and have pity. That's not what I want because if I had to choose to either have this life and the family and the friends I've had and this illness or have a different life without the people but 
be perfectly healthy. I would choose this life every time. Don't take any time you have with anyone you love for granted. You only have so much and you don't ever know what life is going to give you. You never know where you're going to be, what's going to happen. Thank you.